how the precipitation or specially rain is measured you know this is measured by rain gauge okay and how the rain gauge networks are formed how to check whether the sufficient rain gauge station has been established or not okay and also how to report your missing data okay so let's start normally how do you measure the rain well let's say this is the catchment area okay so this is a huge catchment area let's say the area is almost 200 square kilometer okay and throughout this catchment area your precipitation is being occurred okay now to measure the precipitation what you do you normally place some rain gauge which looks like this let's say this is the platform of the rain gauge and this is the funnel or container where your precipitation is collected and let's say the catchment of this rain gauge station is a what is a is the catchment or the area of this container plan area okay so compared to this total area where the precipitation is being occurred the area of catchment of the rain gauge is very very less okay so obviously let's say here you have measured your 20 mm precipitation and in this location let's say there is precipitation of 30 mm but you have not placed the rain gauge here here is no rain gauge station so what will happen you will report that throughout this whole region total 20 mm rainfall has been occurred which is not true at all that's why if you want more accurate result you have to place everywhere the rain gauge station to measure the rainfall or the precipitation accurately but it is also not possible to place each and every point your rain gauge station because that will cost you more money so it is not economical okay so you have to think from economical point of view also when you are establishing this rain gauge station to measure the precipitation so how to check whether the number of rain gauge which are already established or placed in this area are sufficient or not or how to check the adequacy okay so the adequacy or the total number of rain gauge station which are required in any area obviously is a function of accuracy how accurate the result should be or what is the requirement of your accuracy so based on that if accuracy is very high let's say you can have only let's say two percent error in that case you have to place much more number of rain gauge let's say you want only 10 percent error so in that case obviously the number of rain gauge station will be comparatively less compared to this one okay so based on the error level in your report or in your measurement you have to decide how much number of rain gauge station is required so let's say based on some already predefined error let's say the required error is epsilon this is the error you want in your reading how much station is required okay now let's say there are total already in this catchment in any catchment consider this catchment mm -hmm. okay let's say there are already m number of station okay m number of station and let's say the first station give you result p1 second one give you result p2 okay let's say this is p1 define them this is first station second station this is third this is fourth okay and this is your mth station and each of this station give you some reading of precipitation let's say this is p1 p2 this is p3 and like that the m station give you pm reading okay so what is the average value of all this precipitation 
So mean or average reading is simply given by P1 plus P2 plus P3 like that plus PM divided by M or the total number of station. Okay, so these are already installed station. Now I have to check based on the required error whether this M number of station are adequate or not. Now when these values differ, obviously there are some standard deviation. Okay, so what is the standard deviation sigma? Well, let's say the mean value is denoted by P bar. So standard deviation will be from statical equation. This is summation of P i minus P bar whole square where i varies from 1 to your m divided by total number of station minus 1. This is the equation of your standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation in all these readings is denoted by sigma. Okay, now the standard deviation is coming for mean value p bar. For p bar, the standard deviation is simply sigma. For 1, what is the variation? Of course, this is sigma by p bar. Well, for 100, what is the variation? This is sigma times. 100 divided by p bar okay and this is known as your coefficient of variation so what is coefficient of variation for any mean value if there is some standard deviation you can find out the standard deviation for 100 okay and that is known as your coefficient coefficient of variation so now you have two value first one is you have your coefficient of variation cv and a certain level of error epsilon based on these two data you can check whether the number of Rengar station which are already installed that is m is sufficient or not well how to check that so based on these two data you can find by this formula what is the number of Rengar station actually required that is m and it is equal to your C B divided by the error times square. Okay, let's say it is coming as let's say this is 9. Okay, due to some values, let's say this is coming as 9 and m is let's say 7. That means you need to install more two number of Ringer station in this area. Okay, so the first topic. Is covered that is how to check the adequacy of rain gauge station now we will discuss how to report your precipitation data whenever you have measured some precipitation data you have to report that let's say this is value of P okay so you have to report this so based on any catchment let's say there are some precipitation is being occurred okay and you have already installed the total number of rain gauge station based on this adequacy check okay let's say you have already installed all nine number of rain gauge station so the, these are your rain gauge station this is one station this is another station like that you have station all the rain gauge and in each and every year let's say this is station one let's say this is station number station one two three like that you check for total in number of station and let's say each and every year let's say first year you record some values let's say this is your reading is r1 r2 r3 like that rm and like that you record for 30 years 40 years 50 years and you are continue to do so okay and all these data are recorded in any meteorological department of any country for example in India it is stored in IMT Indian meteorological department so for any station you will get for any numbers of years where the readings are available okay and let's say like that in a particular year in a particular year let's say in 2020 okay 
there is station 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that and each and every station give you some reading let's say this is p1 this is p2 this is p3 this is p5 this is p6 like that but for that particular year or for 2020 this reading is missing okay you don't have the reading for fourth number of station what is the reading you don't know how can you report that well there are two method for before knowing that method before knowing that method you need to know a particular term that is known as your normal annual precipitation normal annual precipitation what is that well i have already told you that in any i am meteorological department for any station here for station 4 you have 30 or 40 or 50 years of data okay now what is a normal annual precipitation this is the data for last 30 years okay you take last 30 years data and simply make the average of that you will get the normal annual precipitation for that station for example in that in this case this is station 4 okay so like that you have normal precipitation data for station 1 that is n1 for 2 this is n2 3 this is n3 and for fourth also okay let's say this is your n4 and so on okay and for 2020 you have reading for your p1 this is known this is known this is known four is missing you don't know okay so how to find this missing data there are two ways let's say first method the first method is this is case one in first method you have to look into the normal precipitation okay let's say for generalization you have total m number of station okay so you have sorry total m plus one number of station and you have n1 n2 n3 nm and nx nx is the normal precipitation for the missing station okay and these are known let let's say this is p1 p2 like this pm these are known and you have to find the missing data for x x station this is known not known to you so for that the case one is saying if if these normal data consider all these normal data and this one okay let's say the normal data for x station is nx and this is equal to 100 now go plus 10 percent that is 110 and minus 10 percent that is 90 okay so if the values of n1 n2 n3 are lies within this range or within 10 percent of values of missing station in that case the n1 n2 alls are within 90 to 110 in that case you can simply average all the current data all this current data these are the current data so you can simply average all this current data to find this px so px is simply p1 p2 like that pm divided by your m this is the average of current data provided that this normal precipitation of all these stations lies within the 10 percent value of this missing station okay now let's say some values let's say that there is n1 n2 is within this range but n3 is out of 110 or n4 is below 90 
that means for case 2 here it varies beyond 10% this normal deters of known station are varying more than 10% compared to the missing station in that case what you have to do you have to compare the ratios of current value to the normal value okay and this ratio for missing station that means px divided by u nx is taken as average of this p by n value for station 1 for station 2 like that for m station so average of this ratio is coming as divided by m so in that case the average of this ratio is taken to find out px so here px is coming as this average that is p1 n1 plus p2 n2 like that pm and m divided by your total m station times your nx okay the difference is when this variation is less we can only take the average value of current year data to find out the missing one but when this variation is more than 10 percent we have to find the ratio of current year data to the normal precipitation and the way to find this ratio for missing station is to find the average of ratios for other station okay 